Hi guys, um, I'm Kyle Dinn. I'm just, just an average developer programmer. Um, I actually started with uh, Angular first, then I found Go. And then I actually found out that they actually work really well together. And so I kind of like, um, I actually built, I'm actually building an application right now uh, with, a, with a partner of mine. And I thought, hey, you know, um, I learned a lot of great lessons about using both of them together and also about the uh, tools around them. So I use Vagrant and, uh, and Grunt, Grunt.js, to actually do uh, the build. And so I thought we had kind of a good, a good speech. Um, and then, um, but what, I didn't want to show the, the actual code, so I actually distilled it down to uh, this little project I called Go, Gong Fu, because it's Go plus NG equals Gong Fu, Kung Fu, right? Everybody likes Kung Fu, right? Um, let's see, uh, so anyway, but, but so, so what I did was like, hey, this Gong Fu application could be really simple. It's, it just, it has a, 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 a user authentication so that you sign up and then you basically post a, a tweet. Okay. So let's go in here, let's see. Right, what this presentation is about. Uh, oh, and there's a Postgres database in the back too. And um, this speech is really about uh, cr uh, creating a dev environment to, to work uh, with the front end and the back end. So, um, my application kind of works like this. It's like basically a single page application in front. Angular does a really great job of this, of actually handling all the views. So you just, you just hand it um, objects, right, or you know, from a JSON source, then it, then it could just do the rest. So, and then I kind of put this, um, I said, hey, you know, if you want to talk to the uh, Go server, just to send an HR, um, H, XHR request either with a get, post, patch, or delete. Uh, I only use those four. And then the server itself then, uh, then can be left alone to, to deal with what's really good with, which is you know, persistence and, and data, and then actually some security, authentication, and, and secure cookies, right? And the front end can deal with cool stuff like, hey, you want to D3JS, you know? So I, I thought it was really cool. I, I, it made sense to me, okay? And then, well, it's okay, then we have to kind of talk about, well, why do I like Angular? It's just like, it's, it's not just Angular, it's just like basically any really smart JavaScript front end that actually can, can take over and actually do all the Ajax calls and actually um, free, free the server from actually doing all those templating and all that kind of junk. That's what I think, so. Anyway, but, but the reason why I like Angular is uh, because there's two-way data binding. So basically, you can write in your HTML code Little chunks like this, hey, uh, like row, like ng repeat, it's like n row and ch chirps. Chirps is an array of chirp objects, which is chirps are tweets, right? Then, so it, it automatically knows, hey, this, this is a repeatable thing. Yeah. And then it goes, hey, put each one of these, and that's the attribute that you're going to use, right? Um, then in the, on the JavaScript side, with the, each, each page or, or each um, Route is going to have its own controller, and you basically just uh, you attach it to a scope, so it knows that hey, it, it's attached to this HTML. Then from there, the controller itself too, because it actually has a really cool library that can actually handle uh, XHR requests, so you can actually just send that out to the server and get your get your JSON back. All right, that's why I like Angular. Okay. So what happens with my project was like then I suddenly start getting like all of these uh, directories everywhere, you know. Um, I'm an old Java guy, so this source directory, then I could go in there and then it cascades down to, um, you know, all my code models and APIs, yada, yada, yada. And then, but I actually start doing this too because Angular itself has so many different files that I actually start putting like this Angular stuff in the source, in the source directory and having the build tool then concatenate all those out to the web app directory. So, so the web app directory is basically what's finally going to be pushed out for this client, right? So I had all this source stuff that finally gets pushed out to the uh, web app directory. Like Grunt. I, I'm actually using Grunt, exactly. Uh, actually, what I did before was, before I used Grunt, uh, I actually just wrote a whole bunch of bash scripts that actually moved it, moved it all around there and did the compile itself, yada, yada, yada. But then I found like the Grunt itself is actually a really cool tool. So, um, oh, one thing I also did too is like, I do a config J JSON. This thing is um, it has settings that I have the grunt file look at, 
I have the vagrant file, the, 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 the setup file, the installation file of setting up the database initially. It looks at that for, for the settings. And also, um, uh, the grunt looks at it too, and something, okay, oh, and uh, my Go app looks at it too, to set it up. Okay, okay let's go here. Uh, so the two dev tools I like to use, uh, I'm highlighting in this thing, is Vagrant and Grunt. So Vagrant, it's just basically, it's just a, it's just a shell for, uh, for VirtualBox. VirtualBox is the one I like to use. So, um, and then Grunt is a JavaScript container. Um, so it'll concatenate my files, it'll run the test, it'll run the Go test, unit test. Then it'll actually run JavaScript uh, unit test too, a uh, whole bunch of tests. It'll actually build the Go executable itself. Yeah, right. And on um, bonus top two, it, uh, I, I found out it actually does really great Selenium test, which is the end to end test, which is the clicking through the web browser. So, okay. So now my app, which I created, right, uh, it's called, I call it Gong Fu. And the cool thing about it is, it, so, so basically, once you log in and create, and create an account, you just make tweets. And then you can edit your tweets. Um, and that's basically it. That's, this is what this app does. The app, I put it all in my uh, a public repo. So um, the great thing about doing this is like, I could, uh, everybody actually l likes to look at code better than actually like uh, hear someone else yammer on about other stuff they don't really care about. So anyway, but so you just I posted up today. Just go and grab it and fork it, whatever. It's it's all there. Um, okay. So the cool thing about this is, too, is like I put the instructions on there. So maybe I don't have to go through the instructions in this speech. I could just kind of more just talk about like um, how I actually develop in it and actually use this environment. And then if you're curious about it, then you can actually go back and say, okay, hey, uh, what are the steps, you know, and then what are the configuration files to actually configure it, right? Yada, 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 go packages, come on, okay. So, quick question. Go ahead, no, 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 it's, it's Except, this is open source. Why do Go and Angular fit well together? Why do they fit well together? Uh, well. The architecture actually allows me to, to, to have any, any, any kind of backend. So you could choose, you, you could have whatever front end you want and whatever back end you want. I actually wrote a, um, an application, a, um, a test application a long time ago where I had my front, Angular front end talk to two different back ends. One was Ruby and the other one was Go. So, uh, but it's just my own personal preference, so I like Go. Um, there, there are other things like which I start to notice how the Go language and JavaScript language are very similar. And, that, and, and actually, um, I like Go just because in this architecture, right, uh, the front end just sends back a payload of, 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 a JSON, of a JSON object, right? Then the Go can actually just unmarshal that right away and then, here, and then just throws, throws into a struct. So for me, it's really, seam, it's really seamless. Seamless, it's actually just, it's really efficient. I like it, so. That's the reason, that's my short reason for it. Jason's just going back and forth between the two. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. And actually, I could show you an example of that too, but, uh, um, but generally, see, what I would do is like, here, let's see, control, let's see, exit. Okay, from, from, from my machine, I would basically just run my instance here by doing Vagrant up. Okay, it was already running. Okay, great. And then I just, SSH into it. Vagrant SSH. Okay. Oh, and the cool thing I like, the reason why I like to use Vagrant is because I like to develop in the exact OS that it's going to be finally be running in. You know, it's a, um, I'll do some stuff on, on my Mac natively, just if it's trivial. But, if it's some, but also, if it's something that actually has a database and you actually start, you know, um, uh, you need to start dumping the database all the time. It's like, I'd rather just have it in its own nice box and then I can just shut it down. And the other reason why I like to have virtual box is because um, uh, I'm a consultant, so I have different, different projects going on at the same time and I have one computer, so I can just switch between the two. Okay, so here, okay. And the cool thing about this too is like, um, in Vagrant, there's actually a, a sim link 
back up to your host machine. So I actually did the sim link for code. So if I go into the code directory, it's actually the host directory up here. So it's the same directory. So, 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 so which means like for my version control, it's just if I'm, if I'm building and changing that, the instance on there, it gets, it gets sent back to the version control. Okay. So here, okay, um, let's see what I want to do. Okay, here, I'll, I'll show you this one example first. Let's see, yeah, let's see what Okay, I'm gonna run my gong. Here, let's build it first, right? So I just go like, grunt is the tool, so I just use grunt and dev. The cool thing about this is that it, it actually, uh, it concatenate all my files first, then it runs, and oh, the other good thing is uh, Go compiles fast. <laughs> That's the thing I like about it. But it went through and, and actually did all the tests too. So if you actually go back over here, to my, nope, sorry. Here, oh, let's just do this. Okay, see the, see there's a, there's, there's a, this is actually done by the test right there. That, uh, every single time that, here, if, if I did this again, control C. And I build it again. It, that task, I have it built and then actually run, run, the, uh, run the web server right away. So here we go. So there's actually a third one now because it, the testing actually did that. Um, what I can also do here too is like, I can run that, run that Selenium test I was talking about. So from here I can go grunt localhost. And let's see. This will actually fire up like um, uh, we, uh, the, this, the, Selen you know, um, the web browser, Selenium test, and it just runs it. And then here you can see it. It's, uh, it did this because because I have a, as the Selenium test just creates a, a token and the token's one of these numbers and just does a bot in there. Um, let's see what else can I show? Uh, okay. Okay. The reason why I liked I like Grunt is just because it's it's just from here like you can uh, you can actually you know it's it's just easy just to do iterations like here I, I'll, I'll change some some code but it compiles everything it compiles the front end and the back end. So you're, you're always getting the latest of like, you know, so I'm, it's not pieced out. It's, uh, okay, uh, let's see what else I can show you. Okay, oh, here, you know what? I can show you, I can show you this. Okay. If we look at the network traffic, here. Here, let's, okay, here, let's, let's, let's go do a new one here. Hello, hello, right. chirp. You can see that right here, it's uh, all it does is just, oh, sorry, it's way down there. All it does is just does an, uh, an, uh, um, an XHR request up here to, to this URL with, uh, with a certain method. This, this one's post because it's a brand new one. Then there's just another one that comes back, say, and this is the, the whole set. This is all the charts. But also, if I were to go in and edit this guy, like bot right here, and it changes to Fred, right. save changes. Then there's another chirp right, there's another request right here. This one's a patch instead. And the patch contains the um, JSON object. And, and then that's it. So, here, but I can show you a little, a little bit of the code of like how, how from here, what happens when here, then it, then it goes to the, the Go server? Okay, let's go. Uh, let's see. Okay, source. Oh, actually, let me back up a second here. Let's see, you have to go here. This is the app server. And basically, I use this one, uh, this one framework called um, Gentonic. I, li I like it, it works, work, it works really well. Because it creates a really clean uh, route table right here. Here's my main. So you basically have one gen object here, then it, it goes to the routes here. So, but I specify here, if you go through the slash API, then you can actually see like, hey, if you use a delete sort this address, 
it goes to goes to um, that function right here. It's, that's it. It's just really clean. So what we did was that we did a patch for chirp. So it means in vi chirp patch chirp, and then I do it this way. I do the source go vi thing right there. Let's see. So we can go this way. Source. The reason why I do this structure is because I'm an old Java guy, and this is how it was done. So, and then you look for your function, which is it's a was a patch, right? Patch chirp. Here we go. I'd say it's uh, you read the context. I have a model of a chirp. Uh, I read in the body, and then right here, here I did, it does the unmarshalling right here. And said, "Hey, just 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 put it to my uh, my trip object, and then after okay, then the query statement for the update. Okay, then it says, hey, go update it, okay. and then all these are if it fails, and then, then it just just throws back a nice JSON message, say, hey, it failed. So that's how I do my error error handling in, in this in this architecture. It's, it's kind of nice actually. Just send it back. Sorry, I couldn't do anything for you." And then if it, everything's okay, then you send a payload back. The, what I do is I just send back an, an, a little JSON message and say, hey, updated this, and then I gave the idea of what it, of what it updated. Um, this statement here, if you want to look at this statement, I attached it to uh, my model. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. And then what was it? Uh, it was update, right? Statement update right here. Okay. And here's one. Here's also another cool thing that uh, you can kind of see right here under API. I have my chirp test. These are all the tests, and these all ran every single time I do like a, a compile. And it's kind of nice. Like I I just do do that grunt dev. It compiles this. It runs a test every single time. So I know if I make any changes to it, any of my code, then then it's, it's always being constantly tested. So, um, I have a really unstructured speech from, for now, so I actually, um, uh, I, I'll open it for questions. And well, if you could just talk a little bit more about your overall architecture, you've got a Postgres database. Oh, okay. You've got uh, essentially a net HTTP package, uh -huh. code, and then you've got uh -huh. a bunch of deployment on Angular. Uh -huh. Is that essentially what I understand? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Oh, what's here. Being oh, here we go. Postgres at what point? What's that? What's being stored in Postgres at what point? Um, the tweets and the users. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 basically here. It's basically uh, uh I kind of have it. What I didn't do just um, uh, just for my project, just because I I didn't try to find an ORM just yet. Right. I actually wanted to learn, you know, as as natively as possible, like you know the Go like you know how do you do database, um, you know, to how to work with the database. So basically, for me. Um, look at the models it, here. It's just oh, actually here I can show you actually. Actually, this is in my DevOps right. I have an SQL. Here's a create table. So um, this is what's stored in the database. This is it. And what I can actually do from um, from Grunt too. This is actually kind of nice. I can do from Grunt. I can skip out here. I can do like a Grunt PG rebuild. And this will actually rebuild. Oh, I have to do the password. Okay. Kung Fu. Okay. There we go. And if you guys should go back to the. Oh, I have to run it again. Okay, let's do it. Right dev. Then. Oh, there we go. Okay. There, um, one came in uh, with my initial build. Yeah, that, that, like that's in the book. And this one came in with the test, just because I, I, I reran the test. Um, yeah, so, so basically, it's um, uh, maybe I should talk about Grunt a little bit, right? Because since I'm using that a lot, um, Let's see. There go. See, um, Grunt is just a comp it's 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 just a it's just a package full of the, these Node.js packages. 
So um, when I found out that, that Node.js can actually just run bash scripts, that was, that was pretty much all I needed, right? So, but, but, but there are a few I, I, I did use. I actually use this one Go package. There, there actually is a Node Go, Go package builder. The cool thing about it, 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 lets you, um, it, it lets you set more than one Go path. So I found that was nice. And then you just kind of set some, some different settings. Oh, oh, and I take the settings from my config.json. So, um, but even for all the database stuff, I actually just run shell. So uh, I'm so used to actually uh, uh, running Postgres or, 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 or PSQL commands from the command line that you could just put it inside. Yeah, okay, like, yeah, like these are just bash commands, but I just put it inside grunt so you can actually com just have it all together. So it's just, it's just a matter of organizing. Uh, I found that this technique works for me. So, okay. Yes? How's that what? Selenium. How am I using it? Okay. Uh, sure. I'm running my test in JavaScript. Oh, oh yeah, you know what? Uh, I have tried the Go Selenium um, package that somebody wrote out there, and um, I didn't get very far with it. So, but the cool thing about this, I could, but, but this Selenium package, which is actually written for uh, Angular, it's called a projector. And actually, because it actually has, it has, it has the um, Selenium, how do you call it, uh, drivers in there too, but it also has drivers additionally for for, uh, for Angular, so it's just so that you can actually even like, specify, hey, select me this ng, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, this ng model, then it actually knows that, so, 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 so there's basically like shortcuts on top of that. Yeah. Um, Once I figure out this, okay, uh, was there any difference between the, uh, the Selenium, Selenium drivers and, and this one? I actually prefer. Oh, my my preference on, on the Selenium drivers is actually is is this uh, is this Java, uh, JavaScript uh, driver. Um, I was able to get it up pretty fast, and it's actually it's just, and, oh, and plus it fits in this um, this Grunt tool because the Grunt tool is actually just a JavaScript tool. So so it so so it fit really well. Yeah, that's one I prefer. Um, any other questions? Or, or, go ahead. Yeah, how are you uh, serializing or are you transforming your Postgres queries into scrums? Are you training or are you doing that at all? Or are you based on that? How are you translating the data to get back to Postgres into JSON? Oh, uh, oh, into JSON. Yeah, um, Go has marshalling and, and, and it's, it's just the standard um, JSON library in there. So, so. are you getting back JSON from your Postgres query platform? No, I'm getting. Uh, Yes, exactly. I'm getting a row back from uh, from uh, from Postgres. So then you're probably just like stripping the columns or something. Or how are you getting that? How are you getting the data? Back to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Here, yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me. Let's keep it up. Let's see. Uh, okay, like in chirp right here. Um, let's see. If I do a select, let's see. It's, it's, Oh no no okay no 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 no, no. it's it's hang out it's out, it's out here okay so here like like uh, it's, it's there's um yes there's a uh, there's a scan uh, method from the uh, uh, query from uh, from the query library, which allows you to actually send it back to that structure, that struct. So um, let me see. I can pull. That's part of the, the driver. That's the, that's the uh, Go driver. Yes, I think that's a standard Go Go uh, database driver. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the one I use is. Hang on a second. Up here. It's this. It's a standard one. It was uh, okay. Yeah. Was it? Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's down there. Okay. Yeah, but it's 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 yeah, like it was in there. So. So the scan function of yeah. the drive will automatically right. turn your Postgres into JSON. Go for a couple lines. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, row scan. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it has to be ordered in the same order that you actually have ordering your struct. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was I was going to try to look for an ORM that, that you know that was a little bit more intelligent, but then I had a whole bunch of stuff to do, and actually, and actually, I wanted to learn it this technique first, and then go on to a, an ORM after that. Hi. We found a package called SQL Struct the other day that uh, okay. is the tedious part of scanning the rows and matching them up. Oh, right, right. Okay. Back and it uh -huh. takes care of the deserialization. Right, okay. Tangy. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. What I just. Scan the, uh, the rest of the query in the model. I'm sorry? Why did you put most of the SQL in the model and then the scan in here? Um, just. Well, I guess in here, I guess in here is the logic, and then in, in the model itself was like, uh, like I thought of the, the query, the query string, is it something that belonged in the model because it, it's 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 attached to it and it, it won't, you know what I mean? I, I you could put it in different places, but yeah. I thought I thought it was I, it made it made sense to me, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Hey. Um, anyway, thanks thanks a lot for listening to me and. Uh, uh, if, if you're interested in the code, it's, it's, it's just, uh, uh, it's on the web. I mean, it's, it's on GitHub. And then uh, if, if you have any comments about it, or, or if I may uh, just send me an email, and then I, I can, uh, I can uh, explain it to you. Uh,